Hi, ladies and gentlemen. We are here to do some more polynomial division. Now, today's is synthetic division instead of long division. It's called synthetic division because it's not going to look like long division. So um, you'll see that today, in my opinion, is I think this one's a little bit easier than long division. So you might be asking yourself, well, Mrs. Black, if this one's easier, why in the world did you force us to do polynomial long division yesterday? Well, the reason is right here. Um, synthetic division can only be done with linear factors. And when I say a linear factor, that means it has a degree of one. So the exponent can only be one. So let's look and see if we can divide this polynomial by these following things. Okay, so x to the fourth minus 3x to the third plus 4x minus 1. Can I divide that by x minus 6? Well, let's see if its degree is 1. So looking at the x, I don't see an exponent other than 1, because if there is no exponent, it is an exponent of 1. So yes, I could divide by x minus 6. Can I divide by x squared minus 6? Well, I said the degree had to be 1. So since this degree is 2, you cannot. So you would have to use long division. So that's why we need to know both, because in some cases you're going to have to use long division. Could I do it for this one? Could I use synthetic? Well, looking at the degree of x, it's 1. So yes, we could. Here, well, that's a fraction, so that's kind of scary, but the degree is 1, so yes, we can. Here, though, this is tricky. The degree here, and we'll learn this later on, I have a, a power of 1, but anytime you have a radical, whatever's in this index is going to be a denominator. So this is actually x to the 1 half minus 6. So now can I use synthetic division? No, because the degree is 1 half. Okay, so you can't use it with radicals, can't use it with degrees other than 1. Okay, so some helpful hints about synthetic division. Um, synthetic division um, uses only the coefficients, so we're not going to actually use the x's. And you have to use 0 as a placeholder for any missing terms. And you have to make sure your divisor and your dividend are in standard form. So this is our first section. Um, so let's look at this dividend, x squared 11x7. Is that in standard form? Well, to be standard form, it has to be largest coefficient, or sorry, largest exponent, and then work its way down. So do I have the largest exponent first? Two. The exponent here is one, and this doesn't have any x's, so it would have an exponent of zero for the x's. So x squared, x to the first, x to the zero, those are in decreasing order. Okay, so is that in standard form? Yes, so let's check this divisor. Is it standard form? x, no x. Yep, that's perfect. So how we are going to set this up is we are going to make a backwards capital L, the beginning of a box. We're gonna skip a line and we're gonna draw a long line. So what happens here is we are going to take this divisor and set it equal to 0 and solve. So I have x plus 4 equals 0. Now I need to solve for x. So how would I get x by itself? I would subtract 4 from both sides, so x would equal negative 4. You could do this in your head. You don't have to write it out. But whatever that is goes in this box. Then this is called the coefficient line. We get these numbers from the coefficients of the dividend. So go look at the dividend, 3x squared, 11x, and 7. So the coefficient here is just the number 3. The coefficient here is just the number 11, and the coefficient here is just the number 7. So this thing right here is called the coefficient line.
and we got it from the coefficients of our dividend. Okay, so the thing before the division sign goes here, thing after the division sign, set it equal to zero, and it goes there. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the actual math. Oh, I didn't, I forgot. Um, used only the coefficient, cool. Use zero as a placeholder. So a placeholder would be when one of my degrees is skipped. This goes th degree of two, degree of one, degree of zero. So three, or sorry, degree of two, degree of one, degree of zero. So two, one, zero. Did that count down and not skip anything? It didn't skip anything, so I don't have to put zero in as a placeholder on this one. I might in another one though. So keep that rule in mind. Okay, so what happens is this first number just falls out of the sky. That's all you do to it is it falls out of the sky. Then it goes below that line. Now, what happens here, any numbers, oh, that's off the screen. Any numbers that are under this line, you have to multiply them by the number that's in the box and write the product. Remember what, and remember product is the answer to a multiplication. Write the product above the line in the next column. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take three and we're gonna multiply it times the number in the box. So our number in the box is negative four. So you can write it real small here if you want. Three times negative four. What is three times negative four? Well, that is negative 12. So we're gonna put a negative 12 here. Then this next number doesn't just fall down. In this case, now that we have two, we add them together. So 11 minus 12, gives us negative one. And again, we have to multiply by the number in the box. So negative four, negative one times negative four is gonna be positive four. And then we add down the column again. Seven plus four is 11. Once you get to the end where you don't have any more columns, you finish this off with a backwards L again. Okay, so three dropped. Once it's below the line, I multiply it by that number in the box, then move it to the next column. So three times negative four was negative 12. Add down, once it's below the line, multiply it by that number in the box, move it to the next column, add down. And then once you're out of columns, you stop. Okay, and then here is where you get your new answer. So your new answer, this last thing is going to be our remainder. Then this one is gonna be a number. This is gonna be an X. And if I had more, it would be X squared, X to the third, X to the fourth, and it would keep going up. Okay, so our answer here is three X minus one, and one is just a number, so I don't need to put an X with it. And then it's got a remainder of 11. So how I would like to see that written is 11 divided by the divisor, because it didn't get divided by the divisor. So 11 over X plus four. Now on Math Excel, it's going to want you to put it as 3x minus 1, and then there will be a remainder box for you to put the 11 in. Okay, so you put the 3x minus 1 as your answer. Oh, the lights just went off. And a remainder as 11. Looks like I need to make this a little bigger so you can see all the things at the same time. There we go. Okay, so let's try a bigger one. Let's try a bigger one so we can see more information. Um, so as we look here, we need to make sure that these are in standard form. Are these in standard form? Well, let's check it out. 
it looks like I have an x to the third, x to the second, and then a 10. So if I look closely, it looks like I am missing, let's see if I write with this, if we can read it. Mm, close, we'll use a different color. It looks here like I am missing an x term. Correct? I've got x to the third, x squared, then no x, and then a 10 without an x. So since I'm missing an x term, I need to put zero in as a placeholder when I do my coefficient line. Okay, so my coefficient line is going to be, oh, let's start out with my backwards L. My coefficient line is going to be 3, then 4, then I don't have an x term, so I need to put in 0 as my placeholder, and then 10. And then how do I find this little guy that goes in the box? Well, I take my x minus 2, the divisor, set it equal to 0, add 2 to both sides, x equals 2. So 2 is what goes in my box. Draw my line, and then remember, this is now just adding and multiplying, or multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding. So first number drops, so I have a three. Then I multiply that by what's in my box. So three times two gives me six. Then I add on the way down, four plus six is 10. Then I multiply by what's in my box. 10 times 2 is 20. Add on my way down. 0 plus 20 is 20. Multiply to get the next column. 2 times 20 is 40. Add on my way down. 10 plus 40 is 50. And you want to make sure you kind of separate them. Okay. Then there at the end, put a box around that guy. Hopefully you remember that this is the remainder. Then as I move to the left, um, this is a number. So after remainder and number, then I start with my x's. So this is x, this is x squared. I have a different pink pen. That one's kind of running low. Okay, so to write my answer, I would take these and put them with their buddies over here. So it's going to be 3x squared plus 10x plus 20 with a remainder of 50. So we go plus 50 divided by x minus 2. So that's the thing that had not, hasn't gotten divided by x minus 2 yet. I should probably put a box around that one too. Okay, let's try more. So flip it over. If you didn't realize there was a back, you do now. Um, I want you to go ahead and pause this one, if you would please, and try to set up all of these things. Try to figure out what goes in the box and what goes on this line. So hopefully you did actually pause that and do as I suggested. I'm gonna figure out what goes in the box first. So x plus two, set that equal to zero. Oh, so for the first time, we're going to have a negative number in the box. Okay, and then I need to make sure this is in standard form. So I check my x's to the fourth, to the third. Um, it looks like I'm missing a to the first, or to the second, I mean. So I have to put in zero x squared to the first and x. So I've got three, then negative one. Then 0x squared, 5x's, and negative 1 as my last number. Then again, I want you to pause this and go ahead and try it on your own. So we add, or we drop the first number, then we multiply. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. We add down to get negative 7. 
we multiply by negative 2 to get 14. We add down and get 14. We multiply by negative 2 again and get negative 28. We add down and get negative 23. Oops, I got a little excited. I forgot to write the 2. Negative 23. Now we multiply negative 23 times negative 2 and we get 46. So my remainder is 45. So this seems to me to be a lot quicker than long division. So then remember we take, this is our remainder, this is our number, x, x squared, x to the third. And if there were more, they would just keep getting one more degree from the x each time. So I have 3x to the third minus 7x squared plus 14x minus 23. And then the 45 is positive, so we'll do plus 45 divided by x plus 2. Okay, last one, and this one is a little trickier. Well, last one like this anyway. We have more stuff. So again, if you would please pause the video, try to figure out what goes in the box and what goes on the coefficient line. So if I take x minus 3i and set it equal to 0, I get x equals 3i. So in my box is going to be 3i. Now spread these out a little bit because this gets a little confusing. So in standard form, my first one is x to the third. That's one of them. Then I have negative 5x squared. I have 9x and I have negative 45 with no x's. So first number just drops. Now I multiply by 3i. So 1 times 3i is 3i. Now I add down 5 and ne negative 5 and 3i are not like terms. They are not like terms. So they can just sit next to each other. 5 plus 3i is what goes in that box. Okay, now this is where it gets just a tiny little bit tricky. So what I have to do now is I have to multiply 3i times my negative 5 plus 3i, correct? So I am going to distribute that, and I will get 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. i, and there's nothing, so that's just an i. 3i times 3i. Well, 3 times 3 is positive 9. i times i is i squared. Now, I don't know if you remember this or not, but i squared is negative 1. So anytime you ever, 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 ever see an i squared, we can replace it with a negative 1. So I have negative 15i plus 9, and I'm going to replace that i squared with a negative 1. So now I see that I have some more simplifying to do. So I have negative 15i, and then 9 times negative 1 would be negative 9. But remember, anytime you have numbers like this that has an i, you have to have real first and imaginary second. Okay? So that is not in the correct order. It's going to have to be negative 9 minus 15i. So my multiplication here is going to give me negative 9 minus 15i. Okay, so here when I add down, I have to combine my like terms. So the 9 is a like term with the negative 9. Those two cancel, and all I'm left with here is negative 15i. And then I have to multiply by 3i. So I have 3i times negative 15i. So if I multiply those together, 3 times negative 15 is negative 45. i times i is i squared. Then again, we remember that i squared is negative 1. 
So I have negative 45 times negative 1, so I end up with positive 45. So 45 goes here. Then I add down 45 plus 45 is 0. So I have a remainder of 0. So remainder, number, x, x squared. This gets a little confusing. Okay. So I have 1x squared, so I'm not going to write the coefficient. I'm just going to write x squared. But I have negative 5 plus 3ix. So I'm actually going to write a plus sign. And then in parentheses, I'm going to do the negative 5 plus 3i and put an x with it. Then I have minus 15i and no remainder. So that is it. And I know that one was a little bit more challenging, but I really think that you can do it. Just go slow. Remember to distribute when you have two terms. Just multiply when you have one. And don't forget to change that i squared to negative 1, which changes its sign. Okay? You can do it. All right, next let's talk about this. A binomial is what's called a factor of the polynomial only if the remainder is 0. So is x minus 3i a factor of x cubed minus 5x squared plus 9x minus 45? Well, that was the problem we just did. Is x minus 3i a factor of that? So all we have to do is the synthetic division and then check and see if our remainder is 0. So was our remainder 0? Well, yes, it was. So is this a factor? Yes. Why? Well, because the remainder is 0. And how do I know that? I know that because I just did it right here. So my work backs up this answer. So if you're ever asked if something is a factor of something, you have to do the synthetic division. And then if the remainder is 0, you say yes. If the remainder is anything other than 0, you would say no. Okay, we are going to switch gears a little bit and learn about synthetic substitution. Synthetic substitution is actually very, very similar, um, but it will, instead of saying take something and divide it by something, it will say find f of and then have a number in here. Okay, so whatever that number is, instead of setting it equal to zero, we just put that number in the box. Okay, so that number goes in the box. Don't change its sign. Don't do anything to it. Just immediately put it in the, in the box. Do not pass go. Do not collect $100. Don't do anything to it. Just put it in the box. And then same thing. You have your coefficient line. Remembering to put everything in standard form and zero in case you have to have any placeholders. And then here, this is what f of a equals. So whatever your remainder is, what had been a remainder in the division problems, that's where your answer is. Okay? So we're going to try this one. Find f of negative 6. So remember, we're not going to do a darn thing. We're just going to put negative 6 in our box. Then we make sure that this is in standard form when we write our um, coefficient line. So I have 8x to the fifth, so 8 for x to the fifth. So now x to the fourths, um, I don't have any x to the fourths, so I'll put in a 0 as a placeholder. Then next I need x to the thirds, I've got negative 1 of those. Then next I need x squareds, I've got 5 of those. And next I need just x's don't have any. And last, I need one that's just a number, and I don't have any. So I had x to the fourth as a zero, and then x and a number as a zero. I had to put in placeholders for those. Okay? So this one, if I remember correctly, gets kind of crazy. So let me grab my handy-dandy calculator. So first, is we drop this, so I've got 8. Then I multiply it by what's in the box. So I get negative 48. Then I add down, 0 minus 48 is negative 48. Then I multiply by my number in a box. 
So multiply by negative 6, I get 288. Then I add negative 1 to that, and I get 287. Multiply that by what's in the box, and I get negative 1,722. Add the 5 to that, I get negative 1,717. Move my calculator over to the other side. Okay, multiply that by what was in the box, which is negative 6. This is getting crazy. And I get 10,302. Add 0 to that, and it's going to stay 10,302. Multiply it by my negative 6, which is in the box. I get negative 61,812. And when I add 0 to that, it stays negative 61,812. Then whatever is in this final box, that's my answer. So my answer to this problem is negative 61,812. Most of yours will probably not be that big, but just so you know, they can be. So whatever number is in the box is your answer when you're doing synthetic substitution, and you'll know when you're doing synthetic substitution when you have this f of and a number. So remember, just move that number straight into the box and then do your same steps that we did. Drop the first one, multiply by what's in the box, add, multiply by what's in the box, add, multiply by what's in the box, add, etc., etc. Okay, last thing, and then you'll be done for the day, is when the directions say factor completely. When the director directions say factor completely, your answer needs to be written as linear factors. And if you remember from the first thing we talked about, linear means we have a degree of 1. A factor is something like x, x minus a number, or x plus a number. Okay, so linear, degree of 1, and factors needs to be either x or something in a parentheses. So if I look at this, x plus 5 is a linear factor. Cool, that's done. x squared minus 3x plus 2. That one has an x squared, so it's not linear. If it's not linear, that means I'm going to have to factor it. So to factor that by the AC method, I would take x squared times, or I would look for a GCF. I don't see a GCF, so I take x squared times 2. That gives me 2x squared. Make my list 1x and 2x, um, but that doesn't give me negative 3. But if I make them both negative, then it does. So I bring down my x squared. This middle term splits and becomes negative 1x and minus 2x from my list, and I keep my plus 2. So hopefully you remember this from 4, 4 and the factoring practice that we just did not too long ago. So x squared minus 1x, that has an x in common. If I take an x out, I have x minus 1. And over here, it looks like they both have a 2 in common, but if I just take out a 2, this would say negative x plus 1. Well, that's not what that says. So I need to change the sign, so I take out a negative 2 to make that say x minus 1, because remember the things in the parentheses have to match. So then finally factored, it's x minus 2, x minus 1. Well, that's just for that chunk. What about that chunk? It needs to come down. So x plus 5. So if it says factor completely and you have a squared, you're going to have to do the AC method and see if you can factor it further. Okay? Good luck on your assignment. Let us know if you need help.